Hello, people. That's Jason. And I'm not dressed up today. And, uh, I guess, um, I guess I'll just kind of start at the beginning. I'm going to at least attempt in some ways to use some of my YouTube videos and, well, a little bit of, well, me, to at least attempt to make kind of a documentary about, well, my life. Uh, for those that don't know, my name is Jason. Sean Jones, if you really want to know. Uh, I was born December 4th, 1973. I was also born colorblind, red-green colorblind, if you're curious. And with mild cerebral palsy, for those that may or may not be interested. And also for those that don't know, and while I'm doing this documentary, oddly enough, or... I don't know. You know what I mean. Anyway, uh, I'm a crossdresser. Yeah. Yeah, I know you can't tell it, can you? <laughs> At least you're at, not right now. This is what the world sees here. Pretty much every day, almost. I see, well, a big dude that's overweight in pants. If I'm not at work, usually a t shirt and jeans. That's my work shirt. If you're curious, uh, well, um, yeah, a lot of people may you know say that cross-dressing is wrong, or I'm gay, or I don't know. There's a whole bunch of stuff. But to answer some of the normal questions, quote unquote, I'm not gay. Sorry. Well, I don't know. I should say sorry. But anyway, I'm straight. I like women. If you're not sure what straight means when you're a guy. Uh, also, yes, I have a penis. Thank you. And if you're gay or bi man, I really don't want to see yours. I have my own to look at. Thank you very much. And, uh, oh. Uh, I guess, you know, someone would ask, you know, why would you cross dress? Or, like I said, there's a whole plethora of questions. Well, let's start with why. Well, I don't know if I can really nail it down uh, to an exact reason that would satisfy anyone. Uh, but just one day when I was, like, I don't know, like 13, maybe. Maybe less. Meh. Me. It's hard to remember for sure. But anyway, my parents weren't around for once. And I was at home by myself, best as I can remember. And uh, I decided to put, I'd always like dresses and pantyhose and how women look. Because I'm a guy. And yes, ladies, I like how ladies look in dresses. Anyway, so I decided to wear one. And I put on my sister's bra, my sister's panties. I forget whose pantyhose. Me, it didn't matter. And my mom's dress. Because my mom had lots of dresses in her closet. So, I just borrowed one, temporarily. And, uh, that was my first experience, really. After that, I didn't really dress up much totally, because... I knew if my dad caught me, he'd probably kill me. And then I knew my mom wouldn't approve, and I knew uh, my sister wouldn't approve, and I definitely knew where I lived. Nobody else in the freaking town would approve, if you're wondering. It's a little interesting. But uh, at the time, I lived in a little place called Orofino, Idaho. And, um, you know... It's very, um, it's hard to explain in some ways, but essentially, you know, if you're not white, straight, uh, Christian, at least those three main things, you're pretty much out of luck. And even if you're those three things, you still can be out of luck, depending on all sorts of other criteria. Very 
um, judgmental, perhaps, is a good word. I don't know. You can figure it out. But, uh, so, you know, nobody knew I cross-dressed at the time. Uh, and uh, after that, like I said, I didn't really ever, maybe I cross-dressed a couple of other times. I don't really recall, to be honest. But most of the time, I just put on pantyhose underneath my pants. A, because it's easy to find torn pantyhose. You know, my mom or sister threw away because, well, they were run or torn or whatever. And B, because they, you can hide them under your pants pretty easy, if you're curious. So I did that for, I don't know how long. Eventually I stopped. Um, not really because I wanted to, but because, um, for those that don't know, I was raised LDS or, or Mormon, or however you want to refer to it. And, uh, let's just say, as far as I know, the LDS or Mormon religion isn't really big on cross-dressing. In fact, I don't think too many religions are too hip on it, to be honest. But, anyway. And so, I just felt that, you know, wasn't appropriate or, you know, what I should be or whatever. And I've always felt, you know, kind of, and I'm sure most people do to some degree. Um, you know, kind of a pressure to conform. You know, yeah. You, you know, like as a guy, you know, you have to wear pants. You have to wear, may not a t-shirt, but some sort of men's shirt like this. You know, and you know, watch football. And I don't know, drink beer and smash beer cans against your head or something. I don't know. And you know, go hunting and you know, I don't know, shoot guns. And, work on cars or whatever and some of it I'm okay with I've been hunting with my dad I don't know if I'd ever be an avid hunter it's, I don't mind it but definitely not a huge interest to me and you know I just kind of started discovering that you know most people kind of categorize things into, you know, man things and women's things to a little degree. Like, you know, when I was working on my 1969 Ford Fairlane, yes, people, I owned one. That, most people would say that's a guy thing or a manly thing, you know. You know, but when I paint my toenails or I put on my dress, they'd probably say, that's more female, and I kind of discovered that, at least for me, I kind of, eh, it, you know, male and female is kind of like, you know, a little bit on each side, to some degree. Well, but, um, and, you know, I just felt like I always had to conform to this, I don't know whatever I was thought I had to be, you know, I had, I thought I had to be, you know, and probably wouldn't hurt me on some of it, you know, a good LDS man or boy or whatever you want to quantify it as, and, you know, go to church, you know, wear my suit, I hate suits, by the way, and, you know, get married and have 2.5 kids or whatever, you know, and, you know, just kind of what, at least to me, society wants you to do to, to some degree, you know, expects of you or however you want it and to say it and sorry for the cough drop, um, but I don't know, I mean, I've always been a little, uh, interesting, odd, whatever. Because, for those that don't know, and I'm not sure exactly what happened, to be honest with you, but uh, somewhere around age seven, not too surprisingly, when I moved to Orofino, um, something happened to me. I'm not sure exactly what, but uh, whatever it was, it was not good, because whatever that event was that I can't can't seem to remember for the life of me. 
um, it altered me and uh, at least in some ways and some people would say it's going crazy but whatever I became two people and uh, at least uh, at the time I always thought of it as kind of like imaginary friends because you know I was a little kid I was like seven it's like eh whatever and uh You know, maybe it's just me thinking out loud or my vivid imagination, but you know, I'd hear them talk to me and I could talk to them. You know, I didn't really hear, well, I guess sometimes they respond to me. Yeah, I still apparently have imaginary friends. And I'm 41. Oops, oh well. But, um,. Uh, You know, I was kind of used to, you know, feeling like I was more than one individual, even though I'm only one body. I know it's confusing. But up here, you know, I've always felt torn, so to speak. And, uh, you know, one side of me has always been very male. And uh, for those that don't know, I wrote. I finally named that side after writing a fictional story. Maybe a little before then, honestly. But uh, finally named him Twisted Metal. And that kind of represents what I view as my male side. This. Or at least semi close to this. And uh, mostly it's the stuff I don't like about myself, to be quite honest. Everything I view as male, I basically don't like. Yeah. Weird, huh? Anyway. And, uh, you know. I just kind of dealt with things. And, uh, my teenage years, uh, those were just awful. Ugh. I'm surprised I didn't kill myself, honestly. I just really am. Even into my early 20s, it still was pretty much a disaster area. Mm. By my late 20s, started to kind of, at least to some degree as far as mentally other than my depression, which unfortunately hangs around quite severely. I've hit had it about since I was seven. Hmm. We see a well bit of a tie in there, anybody? Yeah, me too. But anyway, you know, my late 20s, I kind of tried to pull my life together as best as I could. And, um, I got married, you know, you know, tried to live the normal life or whatever. Oh, just never, never really felt like I belonged or happy. I guess if I had to sum it up, I've been depressed this is all get out. Granted, most of the time it's what I consider normal, which is every once in a while I have suicidal thoughts. Oh, I should kill myself. And I just kind of, eh, whatever. And then there's from September to like January, February ish. Basically almost spring, somewhere around that time frame. When my depression just goes off the charts. And I really want to off myself sometimes almost daily. During my teenage years it was pretty much daily. Sadly pretty much every single year too, from like probably twelve or so to well, early twenties. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. So yeah. I guess I've talked longer than I thought I had. <laughs> oh well. But uh, I guess that's kind of a brief introduction to to me. Uh, I don't know, it's hard to think of everything, but a little bit of my background. And uh, I'll try and go from there and keep adding to it. And probably forgot some stuff, but at least you know a little bit about me now. Uh, 
If you have questions, within reason, I'll answer them. Try and be nice. If you tell me to off myself, well, I'll tell you to off yourself right back. I'm just that kind of a guy. So, because I'm just trying to be who I am. If you don't like it, well, go fuck yourself. <laughs> This guy who I am. But uh anyway. I guess this is Jason for today. Later on you'll meet Marilyn, I'm sure. She's my female version. Uh, and maybe she'll add a few things from her perspective. Because I kind of view myself like I say as almost like two individuals. That's kind of weird. Or whatever. Eh, Twisted and Marilyn are kind of like a couple. They don't always get along. Nah. But, you know, they deal with each other because each other they have to, pretty much. And together, you combine them, you get me. What society sees. I'm a little bit of each. So, makes it interesting, I guess. Anyway, as I was saying, this is Jason. Uh, if you want to ask any questions, go for it. Uh, try and be, you know, respectful, I guess would be a good word. Uh, and uh, I guess we'll go from here and see how my documentary of sorts uh, goes. I know most of the time a documentary is not done by the person who the documentary is about, but eh, why not? I don't see a reason why not. YouTube kind of gives a um, chance for people to do things like this, so why not? Anyway, uh, hope you learned at least a little bit about me, and as we go on, you'll probably learn more, and perhaps not like what you learn, but hey, I'm not perfect people, sorry. Anyway, I'll, uh, let's see, today's Saturday, huh? I'm a lot of it from work, sorry. So, I may be doing another video on Thursday. Probably dressed up as Marilyn. So, we shall see then. Uh, like I say, this is Jason saying goodbye to the, for today and hope you have a good rest of the weekend. Bye. Hey, people. It's Marilyn. Yeah, it's been a while, hasn't it? I'm still kind of working on a documentary. I don't know if it'll all be about me, but, you know, just kind of like, you know, about me and a little bit of world events and stuff, because, I don't know, to me, a documentary is more than just one person. It's about, you know, what's going on in the world. Uh, for those that don't know and have, I guess, lived under a rock or something similar to me, I never watch the news, people. Sorry. Anyway, um, uh, Leela, hopefully I say her name right, Alcorn uh, a while ago, I forget how long, I'm horrible with time, but uh, she committed suicide, for those that don't know, uh, for those that don't know, I'll refer to her as a she, uh, they were transgender, if I can say it right, youth, um, essentially identified as a girl, I guess if you're picky, they were male, because they you know, penis. Woo! I do too. Woo! Excitement. But, I don't know. People, some people choose to identify as another gender. I personally identify as two genders, for those that don't know. Male, which you saw Jason in my previous video. And then female, well, Marilyn. That's, well, me. Only. And the dress, and, you know, stuff. And yes, this is a dress, believe it or not. My necklace, I have earrings, if you could see them under the headphones. Eh, I was trying to adjust the camera here. <laughs> it's always hard to know. And, yeah, plum tights, because apparently I keep running all my pantyhose and tights, so eventually I'll have to get some new tights and pantyhose. No wonder women don't like them. It's easy to run them. Well, somewhat easy. Ugh. But, uh, you know, so some of us identifies more than one thing.
not sure exactly how Lila felt all of a sudden, or personally, or anything like that. Uh, but that's obviously an uh, LGBT news, quote unquote, because, well, she was transgender. Would it be gendered in her case since she's deceased? I don't know. It gets so complicated, people. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful to her in any way. I'm just me, so. You may have to bear with me all, but. And I apologize in advance. But oh well. But, uh, you know. I think she, when she killed herself and left a note, you know, fix society, kind of sent a message, obviously, to, well, society, hopefully. Now, uh, at least some of society will ignore it because, well, it's society, sorry. Uh, some of society, me, other people somewhere out there, are going to talk about it because, well, it's important to us. Like uh, the other day, and yes, my nails look crap, like crap, and I'm not even sure if you can tell, but they're actually painted pink. Yes, pink people. Because I guess it was a favorite color or something. I don't know. But you're supposed to paint your paint fingernails uh, pink yesterday in remembrance of her. So, well, I did. And yes, I don't paint them very well. But I also at my job at U-Haul. Even if I did paint them well, they probably wouldn't look very good after a few days. So I was thinking about fixing them. And I was like, why bother? Because they're just going to get destroyed within a few days anyway. But... It's just kind of, you know, a symbol, I guess we can say. Um, you know, a sign of support. You know, for anyone that chooses to support her cause, I guess you'd say. I'm always trying and be careful on wording. I may not do it perfectly, but I think you get the general drift, hopefully. If not, well, be I just don't know, but, uh, and on, um, as far as the documentary, like I say, I'll be using some of my other YouTube footage, I'm not sure what part I'll use next, I'll have to figure it out, it's kind of a process, so again, you may have to bear with me a little bit, for those that don't know, and haven't seen other videos, I'm not the best at social, you know, like talking to people, like, But, you know, whatever. You know, like face-to-face, -face, not, not, not so great. So, you may have to be a little forgiving of me, I guess I'll say. But, uh, it's just me. And, uh, at least one person. I don't like to name names, because I don't want to embarrass people or whatever, generally. Unless you insult me, and then I don't care. Sorry. <laughs> but, uh, I guess I'll say he because they identify as male. Yeah. Tender lands are a wee bit confusing. But anyway, he was talking to me, you know, and obviously he's part of the LGBT community saying, you know, that I should be, you know, a better role model and a better advocate. I didn't even know I was an advocate, people. But anyway, and, you know, just, you know, somebody to look up to, basically. You well, know, I guess in some ways you can look up to me. I'm not a horrible person great person, you know, I haven't, like, you know, saved the universe or anything exciting, you yeah, know, I'm not, like, nationally known, Marilyn Jones, crust chaser that saved the world, or whatever, you know, <laughs> sorry, a little bit of a joke, but whatever, but, you know, I guess some in the LGBT community, like the people that watch my videos, although, I think all sorts of people watch them honestly. Well, maybe not all. But you know, I mean. No, I'm just, not just one group. Anybody's welcome to watch these that wants to. How's that? But, uh, you know, wants me to be an advocate and, you know, role model. And, you know, I don't know. You know, somebody I look up to, like I say, is how I'd word it. And I don't know. I guess in some ways you can look up to me. Yes, I do videos about cross dressing, which. Obviously, it's kind of putting yourself in at least somewhat of a public light. Granted, I don't have a whole lot of viewers, so it's a fairly small public light. Really small. Woo. But, you know, it's still a public light. And, you know, 
Obviously, I'm on Google Plus a lot, posting you know, all sorts of stuff. And yes, for the fiftieth time, I'm not gay. Just in case you missed that. And also, I'm a dude. For all the people that say I'm trying to pretend that I'm whatever, it's a it's just bizarre. People say that I'm pretending to be trans when I'm not, and yet other people say I'm trans, and some people say I'm not trans. And it's just a big argument. I'll let somebody argue over it. I'm a crossdresser. Okay, I like to wear women's clothes. Deal with it. If you don't like to deal with it, well, don't watch my videos. <laughs> and don't read my book that I hope to publish. And yes, that reminds me I need to work more on my autobiography. <laughs> and yes, I make weird sound effects. It's just me. And yes, for some people, I talk funny. And for those that don't know, and I believe I mentioned it in my first video, but I was born with mild cerebral palsy. It doesn't really go away, it's hard to tell you. Um, it can make it difficult to talk, so if I am a little hard to understand, I apologize, but sorry that you get what you get. I've talked to a lot harder people to understand than me personally. Try somebody in India. But anyway. And for those who don't know, yes, the shoes on my feet are heels. They are high heels. I don't know if I can show them or not. Maybe. We'll try again, huh? Ugh. Can you see it? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. And. Generally, I wear a size 13 wide. In this particular heel, there was no 13 wide, so those are size 14s. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I have a pair of size 14 heels. They're a little big, but it was the only size that would actually fit. So I'm shoving Kleenex in the end. I think that'll help. A bit of oil. And what else? Oh, yeah, this is my dress, as I said earlier. And yes, if you must know, I wear panties. Woo. It's like I'm a cross-dresser or something, people. <laughs> How dare I? But I don't know. Kind of going back. I don't know. Yeah, it don't make a lot of sense. I'm a little tired, so yeah. Again, you may have to forgive me a little bit. But, uh, you know, I don't know if I'm much of a role model or an example. I'm just kind of me. An average, quote-unquote, cross-dresser. Whatever that is. Don't look at me. And if you must know, yes, I have lipstick on. That's the only makeup on today. But sometimes I wear more. Depends on my mood. I'm not really going anywhere today. But since it's cross dressing Thursday, I'm cross dressed. If you're wondering, usually it's because my mom's not home on Thursday. And yes, I live with my mother. And I'm 41. My life sucks. Remind me again. But oh well. But uh, anyway, as I was saying, my mother's not home on Thursdays. Well, Thursday afternoons. So guess what? Since she doesn't approve of my cross-dressing. By the way, it's a mental illness. And I'm a sinner. And I'm going to hell. Yeah, yeah. How much fun. But oh well. But you know, she doesn't approve. Well, we'll just put it that way. As soon as she leaves the house, I start getting ready. <laughs> Seriously, I do. It takes me a little bit. Today was a little faster because I shaved earlier. My face, if you're wondering. Because, um, you know, us guys get the hairy faces, which the women usually don't have to struggle with. Eh, what else? I don't know. But it's just sad that the world's so hateful. I mean, you know, I feel really sad that Leela, kind of going back to her again, you know, committed suicide. Uh, I've been close. I mean, holding a loaded gun to your head, it's pretty dang close, I'd say. With well, your finger on the trigger, by the way. Yeah, I did that. So, you know, I can kind of 
Hey, not exactly, but you know, I definitely kind of know where she's coming from, at least a general area. And you know, she wanted to be whatever she wanted to be. For whatever reason, she felt like she couldn't be that. And at least some of it, from what I've read, is her parents. Well, my parents aren't real supportive either. If my dad knew, he'd kill me. Or at least beat the living daylights out of me. My sister says it's a sin. My mother says I'm a sinner and mentally ill. The rest of my family doesn't really know, but I don't really know the rest of my family that well. My one aunt's a lesbian. I don't think she'd care. My uncle? Eh, I don't like him. So I don't really care if he knows or doesn't know. And of course, my aunt's married to him. My uncle, I've never really been pressed to her with her either, and they have like, what is it, nine kids? Me, yeah, whatever. Yes, they're Mormon, LDS. LDS slash Mormon people have usually larger families, kind of like Catholics, I've heard. It's the thing. Multiply and replenish the earth. Look it up. It's in the Bible somewhere. I believe in the very beginning, called Genesis. <laughs> uh, and uh, let's see. So, you know, they have a lot of kids. I don't know. I only know a few of their kids. Mm. But it's not like I'm really close to my cousins or anything. And, uh, oh yeah, I'm having to go to church. Uh, you're wondering, basically, my mom gave kind of an ultimatum lease to me. She'd lie her way out of it any day of the week that, you know, either I went to church or basically I wasn't welcome in her house. So it was nice. And although I was highly tempted to dress in this to church. <laughs> hey, it's a dress! I'm covered. I guess the only thing is uh, you're supposed to have uh, like sleeves. This doesn't have any sleeves. Whatever. I like to, I don't know. Kind of like t-shirt sleeves. I'll compare it to that because I'm used to t-shirts and I'm sure a lot of other people are too. But, uh, whatever. So, I'm going to church. Yeah, that's about as much fun as being hit, hit in the head with a hammer. Yeah. And people at church have seen me with my nails painted and have seen me with earrings in and I'm pretty sure they think I'm gay. Big shock, since apparently everybody in the freaking universe thinks I'm gay. Ah! You have to bear with me on that too. Gets a little disturbing. It's like I'm not gay. I'm sorry. I wear a dress. Doesn't make me gay. Well, you know, odd, but it doesn't make me gay. And if you think I'm mentally ill, well, then join my mother and the rest of that club. The Maryland slash Jason is mentally ill club. Me. At least right now I think of myself as Marilyn because, well, I look roughly like a woman to the best of my ability, people. I know I got big shoulders. I know I got a big neck. I know I got a big head. I know I got big hands. Yes, it's freaking huge. I know I got big feet. The only thing that looks halfway womanish on me is my legs. Yeah. Maybe my butt. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, TMI. Well, uh, women talk about their butts all the time. Is my butt too big, honey? Uh, yeah, but I like it that way. <laughs> if you're wondering, I like bigger girls. <laughs> Whatever. And yes, I still like bigger girls when I'm in a dress. And if you want to call me a lesbian since I'm in a dress, then I guess I'm a lesbian. Although... I have a penis, so I'm not sure how that's possible. But, whatever. I'll let somebody else argue that. Eh, here we go. It's been an interesting video, isn't it? Yeah, well. To me, this is kind of what a documentary should be. You know, just kind of like, I don't know. Obviously, I don't have any anybody interviewing me, you know, and asking me questions. I don't know how I'd answer them, to be honest. I guess it depends on the question. If you feel like asking me a question, go for it. Just be, you know, polite. Within reason, you know. No. Hey. Uh. You like, uh. Whatever. I don't know. Some people can just go way out there. It's like, 
You wear a dress, therefore you want to be fucked by a guy. It's like, whoa, hello. Alrighty then. And things much worse than that. Like the one dude that told me I should commit suicide. Well, or, no, it was a dude. Me or her. Whatever. The one person on YouTube that told me to kill myself. How's that? I was like, yeah, people do that. You try and be nice. Uh, if you're not sure, uh, probably don't do it. Uh, I guess you can kind of see my earring. It's the other ear. Yeah, a little bit. Kind of, sort of. Oh, well. And yes, this is a wig. I really want to know. Deal with it. And maybe it's a little messy. I don't know. I still really haven't gotten used to trying to style women's hair. Because, well, I'm used to short dudes here. Sorry. Just am. Anyway, I've taken up too much of your time today. This is Marilyn. <laughs> saying howdy for today. Uh, I'll be pumping propane again on Saturday. And yes, I do a lot of mail <laughs> work. I pump propane, I hook up trailers, I move trailers, some of them weighing 2,000 pounds with a tool called, nicknamed the mule. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> eh, but you know, I don't give a crud if I do manly things, I do female things too. I paint my nails, I wear lipstick, I put on makeup. I just don't care, people. I'm just that way. If you don't like it, I don't know. Find somebody else. But anyway. So I'll be pumping propane. If you're in West Valley City. Yo, yo, yo. The hood. As you can. And you want to stop by U-Haul for whatever reason. Get propane filled. Make my boss happy. <laughs> I'm serious. He loves to sell propane. Makes a lot of money. I guess. Relatively. I'll be the dude in the hat. Well, probably not the hat this time of year. But in a coat, most likely, because it's kind of cold. I'll buy the propane tanks, pumping propane like they no tomorrow. So, see you there if you choose to join me. Just don't smoke near the tanks, please. I don't want to have to tell you to put out your cigarettes. It's a propane tanks. Well, tanks. Because it's two of them. About 2,000 gallons. You blow that up, you kill me, you kill you, you kill who knows who else. So please don't smoke. At least not by the propane. Go somewhere else. I've had people do it if you're wondering. Anyway, man, yes, more weird noises. It's just me, folks. I never grew up, I guess. Whatever. I don't know. Anyway, hope you all have a good weekend. This is Marilyn. <laughs> I love saying that. Uh, hoping you have a good weekend. And if you're a cross-dresser, may all your cross-dressing be fun and enjoyable. And, uh, yes, if you're ever near me or if I'm ever near you, you're always welcome to go shopping with me. For any type of clothing you desire, whether it be dresses, men's clothes, I don't give a crap. I'll support you if you're male becoming female, female becoming male. If you're somewhere in between, I don't freaking care. If you're purple, well, I may ask if you're some sort of cool alien that happens to be purple. That's a warning if you are purple. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hello, everybody. It's Marilyn. Uh, just a few things I guess today. Let's see, on the 27th of January, I'm lost with dates, so I have to look. Sorry. I went to Paul Mitchell School. They have like a school to teach you like cosmetology and hair and whatever else. I don't know. And I went dressed up. For those who don't know, so that was kind of interesting. I didn't make like a short video before I left. I'll have to find where I put it. Anyway, so whenever I find that, I'll put it up. It's not very long. So I'll probably combine it with something else. 
And then, let's see. On the third, as some know, I dressed up during part of a hangout, a group hangout, I should specify with uh, Cy Williams. Hi, Cy! Anyway, so it's kind of interesting because usually I don't dress up during hangouts because, well, usually I'm not dressed like this. And if you're wondering, is it in a men's shirt? It's the blouse. It's the only blouse I own. Kind of looks like a man's shirt, but it's not. And then, of course, when you get to the bottom, obviously, big. If I can tilt it right, you can tell that it's a uh, skirt. <laughs> and I'm not wearing any heels today. Don't even have nail polish on. Sorry, guys. Or girls. Or whoever. <sighs> yeah. And I know so I was asking first time I cross dressed wasn't really uh, wasn't like I had a plan or you know, I don't know whatever I was just by myself in my parents house for occasion when I was younger we were like 12-ish, 13-ish maybe before that I don't know for sure to be honest with you and, uh, I don't know, I just wanted to put on my mom's dress. Don't ask me why. Because I'm not sure. So I did. I borrowed, like, my sister's bra and panties and somebody's pantyhose. And, well, I cross-dressed for the first time. <laughs> yes, people. Not long ago. Well, I don't know. It was something I liked, but I realized that my dad would probably kill me over it or beat me severely if you're not aware of that and I knew my mom wouldn't approve surprise surprise when I finally came out to my mother she said I was mentally ill in the center so yeah I went over and my sister also thinks it's a sin so yeah not a whole lot of family approval we'll just leave it at that and let's see Oh, so I was asking me a little bit. My parents got divorced when I was like 12-ish, 13-ish, somewhere in that neighborhood. You know, older? Me. I was in junior high. Anyway. So that was a big change in my life. Uh, my mom, of course, lives here in Utah with me, for those that don't know. Currently, she's not here, if you're wondering why I'm dressed up. Um, my dad lives in Idaho place called Emmett. It's kind of sort of close to Boise if you're used to where Boise is. We're, we here, me and my mom, are pretty much in Salt Lake. We're in the suburb, but you know, whatever. Close enough. My sister also is in the suburb of Salt Lake, so. And also for Cy, yes, I have two boys. Uh, I think I told you. Oldest is, let's see, be 11 in July. And youngest will be five on the eighth of this month, which is only a few days away. Hard to believe he's already almost five. Be going to kindergarten next year. Because if you're wondering, like, he was too young to go last year because he wasn't quite five yet. There's this, like, weird rule. Duh. Don't ask me. So, that'll happen. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, uh, uh, it's kind of hard to do a documentary about yourself. I never know what to say. I get asked a lot of questions, and that's the only reason I kind of started this. But uh, obviously, if you have cross-dressing related questions, they're always welcome. Yeah, just trying to be polite, you know. Some people just are a little bit like, "What did you just say?" But you. Yeah. Whatever, it kind of goes with the territory, unfortunately. Hmm. And uh, depending on how much response I get, I may potentially do a cross dressing version of Jeopardy. I would be the one cross dressing, obviously. Uh, if I can get some t contestants, which may or may not happen, we'll have a video chat like Hangouts or something on Facebook, maybe. I'll ask random stuff, and, you know, like Jeopardy, you know, and, 
that might be fun if it all works out. The problem is trying to actually get somebody that wants to participate, number one. I'm trying to schedule it, number two. And then if I get that far, I'll have to think of some stuff. Because obviously you need questions and answers and all that good stuff. So you can play the game. Eh, and of course there'd be no actual prizes because, well, I don't have money growing in my front yard, people, if you're not sure. So sorry. And if you participate, the only prize will be fun, or at least potential fun. So, whatever. Eh, let's see. I don't know. I'm still looking for work. Not that I don't like you all. But it just isn't cutting the bills. After child support, it's about $400 a month, people. Yeah. Ouch. That's hard to live on, despite what uh, you all says. If I wasn't living on my at my mom's house, I wouldn't have a chance. So, yeah. Yeah, Michigan. And uh, for those that don't know, the state of Michigan says that uh, child support is half. Yes, people, half of your gross gross, not net, but gross income. And I'd like to take some senators and be like, hey, I'm going to take half your gross income. See how you survive. See how they liked it. I can guarantee they would not be happy. Nope, 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 nope. But, anyway, whatever. Uh, I'll paint my toenails, I guess. My fingernails aren't painted anymore. I painted them temporarily for the pink for Leah, Leela. I'm probably not saying her name right. Uh, that was a while ago. I think I showed a few pictures. I don't forget. It gets a little fuzzy. Well, I know I at least showed photos. I don't know if I did any video on it, but neat, whatever. Uh, well, it's, I don't know. It's hard to think of things. Um, for those that may or may not be interested, because, well, whatever. It's a documentary, or at least an attempt at a documentary, let's be honest. Uh, how good it is is a little iffy, but why not do a documentary about yourself, roughly? Anyway, uh, for those that are curious, I grew up in Idaho. town I mostly remember is Orofino, so you may occasionally see references to Orofino or the surrounding area. If you don't know where it is, look it up. It does really exist. Mm. Of course, I went to school. I was bullied and teased and harassed a lot because uh, for those that don't know, I do have cerebral palsy. It's mild. So, sometimes... I guess at least according to some, I don't talk as clear as maybe I should. And uh, a lot of people give me a bad time about my speech pattern or whatever. But sorry, folks, this is as good as you're going to get. You know, it's nothing I have control over. Sorry. And, uh, of course, most know I think that I'm red-green colorblind. And what else? Mm -hmm. Well, also in the town I grew up in, there was a psychiatry, psychiatric, whew, that's a hard word for me, people, hospital or mental hospital is what I call it sometimes, and a women's prison, both, oh, about maybe, the prison was the closest within about maybe a hundred or so yards of the high school. And, uh, mental asylum was maybe like 200 or so yards, give-ish, take -ish. So, you know, pretty much a short walk. Either. Not anything severe. So, that was kind of interesting. Mm, what else? No. Uh, for those that are interested, yes, I was married. Twice to the same woman. Mm, she still lives in Michigan, if you're curious. I won't say where, because I don't know. People are weird. Eh, anyway, whatever. 
And, uh, let's see, she has a boyfriend. She, of course, has... Gets weird on children. The two children she had with me. Woo! There we go, I think. And then she has a daughter that she had with him. Woo! Yeah. It says she has a total of three kids, but only two are for me. If that makes sense. And, oh. Hopefully I'll move back to Michigan eventually, just because I'd like to be with my kids. Even if I don't talk about them much. I don't talk about them much because it depresses me, and then, Depression is not good for me. I'll just put it that way. Although, I don't think it's good for anyone. Let's be honest. So, if you're wondering why I don't talk about my children much, that's why. It's not because I'm ashamed or anything. Well, I don't know. Me a little ashamed of being a cross-dressing dad. Me, 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 me. But I am, so I'm trying to get used to that. Eh, whatever. Sorry, people, I haven't been out of the cross-dressing closet that long, relatively. It's only been a little over a year. I still have a lot to get used to. You may have to bear with me. Thanks. So, and what else? Um, um, let's see, if you're curious, my interview today was with Verizon. Answering phone has done that a lot. Hello and thank you for calling Verizon. My name is Jason. That's my legal name, if you're wondering. How may I help you today? And then they're like, yeah, whatever. My phone's broke! Or, uh, whatever. My bill is slightly higher than the national debt! You're like, oh, I'm sorry your bill is high. Or I'm sorry your phone is broken. Or, you know, whatever. It's, my phone is possessed by Jesus! Well, uh... We have a special department for that, sir. So, you know, just all sorts of stuff. And you want some of the calls you get are just out there. It's like, you need some medication. Thank you. Some are, you know, pretty average. You know, my bill's too high. I broke my phone. My daughter flushed it down the toilet. Whatever, you know. It's like, oops. <laughs> oh, I guess that's another thing I can talk about. Uh, for those that are curious about my employment history, uh, most of my life has been in what's called call centers. It's just basically usually a fairly big building. Lots of cubicles, headsets similar to this, and you answer calls all day, you know, for whatever com company, you know. Hello and thank you for calling Prime Star. Hello and thank you for calling Dell. Hello and thank you for calling HP. Hello and thank you for calling insert name of business here so I did that a lot uh, also did uh, a lot of labor jobs mostly temporary work a lot of it really cruddy work I worked at a few newspapers I worked for the Idaho Press Tribune in Nampa if anybody's from Nampa Idaho I don't know if it's still there but it used to be if it isn't if it's still there I used to work there in the circulation department. Uh, minimum wage. Hard, dirty work. Not really anything that exciting, but I got used to it and it was actually not a bad job. Um, also did some security work in Michigan for Burns at first. Name of the company, if you're wondering. And then, let's see... I kept changing names. Pinkerton, and then I think Pinkerton got bought out by somebody else. No, my word. Uh, so I did that. Um, worked at Home Depot, helping people load and unload stuff. Well, load stuff, let's face it. Um, worked at Walmart, stocking shelves. Nothing real fancy. I don't know. I think that's most of my work history, if you're curious. As far as places I've lived, several in Idaho, because of course that's where I grew up mostly. Um, 
basically Salt Lake area, like, excuse me, suburbs and stuff. Uh, Wayne, Michigan, Michigan, if I can talk, and yeah, Owasa, Michigan, if you really want to know. Hmm. So that's, and if you're curious about all the places I know I could drive in Western, but yeah, it'd be quite the list because I moved around a lot. And, I don't know. I guess I've yeah, rattled on long enough today. Maybe it's all just some basic information about me. I don't know if anybody wants to know it, but if you did, well, now you do. If you didn't, well, I'm sorry. <sighs> it's another cross dressing Thursday. <laughs> There we go. Two thumbs up. And let's see. On Saturday I'll be... Excuse me. <coughs> pumping propane again. That's pretty much what I do on Saturday. Other than trucks, trailers. Fun stuff. Mm. Let's see. So trying to have a good weekend, obviously. I'll be working hard. Or are they working? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I did finally get my taxes filed. Exciting. So I make the state of Michigan happy. They'll take my federal return, possibly my state. I'd be curious. Me, yeah, whatever. And uh -huh. I think that's all for today. Again, any the uh, thing you want to know within reason, folks. Some of the questions I get are just like out there, but um, as long as they ch you attempt keyword attempt people to be polite, uh, cross-dressing questions are always welcomed or questions about my life within reason. Some may have lengthy answers and complicated answers, and you may be feeling like you're watching days of your li our lives or something. You know. Like sands through the hourglass. So are the days of our lives. But I, uh, honestly, I wouldn't make this stuff up. There. I just wouldn't. Trust me. So even if it sounds like a soap opera script, it really isn't. It's my life. Uh, so anyway, I'll have to try and figure out what to do the rest of the day. This is Marilyn saying... Goodbye for today. I hope you have a good day and a good weekend and talk to you hopefully next Thursday if all goes well. Bye. Hello, people. That's Marilyn again. And yes, I'm in my R2-D2 dress and my hair is a little messy, but I've been out. Yes, people, I go outside like this. Anyway, if you haven't seen it, R2-D2, and yes, it kind of looks like boobs. It's not, but you know, whatever. And let's see. Ugh. I have striped tights. Tights. Whew, if I can talk on it today. Uh, and yes, I am wearing heels. They're warm. Well, most of the time, so for driving, I'm still not real comfortable driving my stick shift to, with heels on. So usually I wear my flats to drive. Yes, people. I drive a manual. Whoo! Rock on. <laughs> anyway. I'm not sure which video I'll upload first. I'm working on compressing the one right now because it's a little big. Kind of like me. Ugh, look at those guns. <laughs> Sorry, I had to do it. <laughs> this is like, sometimes I look and I'm like, what the heck am I doing at work? <laughs> uh, too much lifting propane and trailer tongues. That's what I'm doing. Anyway, I did do... Another video for Rebecca Cameron, I believe is her last name. Sorry if I miss it. The end might have gotten cut off because uh, unfortunately my camera takes batteries. Yes, folks, batteries. And uh, I think the batteries just died. So I bought some batteries. Yes, that's a camera, folks. Believe it or not, that's my humble little video camera. And yes, the screen only opens one way. Which kind of stinks when you're doing video. But hey, 
Uh, speaking of uh, my tr travels today, I bought some gloves for propane. Protects your hands from the negative 40 some odd below that it comes out at. Bought some AAA batteries, that's what the camera takes if you're curious. And, whoops, I don't know, I'll pick it up later. And some Ameprazole. Woo! Yes, acid reflux. The fun of it. <laughs> Not. Anyway. And I did a little bit of a video uh, at Walmart. I'm not sure if you can hear me. It's hard to say. Or even if it worked. So I'll have to check on that and figure it out. If it did work and you can hear me or you can't apologize. I was kind of nervous about doing it. Because I'm just like standing outside Walmart. In an R2-D2 dress. With a camera. Talking to it. And I did, went to a different Walmart today. I did get a few odd looks. Me, eh, whatever. Eh. And uh, I'll have to figure out what worked and what didn't work. And blah blah blah. blah, 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 blah. Um. Well, I just started thinking about it, and I don't think I've ever really, or maybe I have. I don't recall if I did. But uh, I don't know if I've ever done a video in my R2-D2 dress, so here you go. And the reason I did the part at Walmart is because, well, at least to some degree. And I got work on getting courage, I guess. And I'm not sure on legalities either of, you know, filming yourself out in public. And of course, you know, your arms are only so long. <laughs> And so I'm not sure how I did, because like you saw on the camera, well, I can show it again if you need to see it, but the, this is towards you, which is helpful if you're pointing it at someone else. If you're doing this, you know, it's not so helpful, because you can't see what's over here, obviously. And yes, that's a screen, boys and girls. Very small screen, but hey, it works nonetheless. Yeah, what else? Oof. Oof. Anyway, it's Thursday. So I would explain the get up because, well, my mom's usually not home on Thursday. So therefore, I cross dress. And yes, people, I wear a necklace. And no, that necklace isn't small. My neck is big. If you're curious. I did try and put on mascara during uh, my makeup video. That was kind of a disaster. But he, I kind of anticipated that. But yeah, whatever. I guess I'll get there. Eventually I will need some more primer if I want to wear makeup again. But that'll probably be a while because I am broke. And makeup apparently is made partially out of gold. Or something very expensive similar. At least it feels like it. When you broke. And let's see what else. Oh, yeah. Speaking of uh, being broke, Michigan took my taxes for child support. Plus, they took half my pay as usual. So that's like, oh, I don't know, somewhere in the neighborhood of probably $600, give or take. So my kids ought to be okay this month. I would hope. Depends on how my ex-wife spends the money, of course. But he didn't hear that from me. No. I didn't do that! Of course, then I'll be like, this video of you saying it. And I'll be like, dang it! Oh, well. Hopefully she spends it on them and, you know, stuff they need. Food. Clothes. You know, stuff. Kids are expensive. Yes, yes. But you never know. And, I uh, don't know. Just, uh, issues with her. Obviously, that's why we're divorced. <laughs> so shocking. Twice. Eh, it wasn't the most bright decision marrying her the second time. <laughs> Can't do much about it now, can I? Uh, 
My no, my lipstick matches the dress, but it is a shade, I believe, of blue. Me, yeah, whatever. Has my shadow on. If you can see it, I don't know. Burr. And it may or may not match my dress, but <laughs> me, whatever. That's trying. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's kind of depressing, but uh, part of the transgender culture, I guess we shall say, for a better lack of a term. Uh, transgender people keep getting killed, well, by other people. I think we're up to like six or seven this year. Eh, I guess it was six, because I wasn't, well, I'm not sure. At least six, how's that? Which is six way too many. Heck, one's too many for for me personally. So that's not good news on the transgender side. And yes, yeah, you can argue until hell freezes over whether I'm transgender or not. And, uh, whatever. Why are you arguing? People are dying. Let's face it. So stop arguing and stop killing us. Whoever the heck is killing us. Well. I guess some are suicides, but if someone else is doing it, just stop it, please. That's just screwed up. But, on the kind of mixed and odd side, if you try and kill me, I'll be more than willing to return the favor. Okay? Kill or be killed. That's how I look at it. You try and do it to me, hey, I have no issue returning the favor. At all. So, I may be a bit odd for the transgender community or cross gender community or eh, whatever community you want to try and lump me into. But whatever. Maybe it's a cross gender. I meant cross dresser. Eh. Uh, oh, yeah, I gotta work some more on my autobiography. I did work some on it yesterday. Ugh. Mostly today, I went through a lot of bills that I couldn't pay and just shredded them because maybe eventually I'll pay them, but I don't have the money. So, yes, bill collectors, I owe you money. Good luck getting it. Oh. Uh, tired, I think. Oh. I at least wanted to say howdy. I may put my one uh, video from Paul Mitchell at the end of this one, or at the end of the other. I'm not sure. But it's uh, just basically me freaking out before I go out to Paul Mitchell dressed up. So, yes, people, it's not easy for me. Even though I may look content. Well, I'm in my favorite chair, so that's part of that. And I'm also in the house, so that helps a lot. But outside, it's like just like... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, cough drop. Ugh, and yes, I messed up my hair. Oh. Oh. If, uh, as usual, cross-dressing questions are welcome. Um, if you're curious at all, which maybe some people are, I don't go this way to work because, hey, my mom wouldn't let me. She doesn't approve of me cross-dressing, period, which I got another lecture on. Yeah, whatever. Me, my work doesn't allow it. And you wouldn't want to, trust me. Essentially, the dress code is a collared shirt and a pair of either black slacks or black Levi's. I recommend Levi's with what we do. Jeans, whatever. Doesn't have to be Levi's, whatever. I grew up a lot of times people just called them Levi's, no matter what the brand was. But you get the point. And, uh... Trust me, you you want long pants and you want sensible shoes because 
Oh man, pulling trailers and stuff, uh, or hooking up trailers is just hard, dirty <laughs> work. And working with propane is much better. <laughs> I actually enjoy my other job. It's just, I'll admit, you know, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Any day of the week. But I do like dress, dresses, so, as some know. Every Thursday when my mom's not home, I try and dress up. And uh, thanks to Cy Williams and uh, Andrew and AJ, which I barely, I don't hear much from AJ or Andrew anymore, but I started doing videos however long ago, and so now you're either, depending on what you think of my videos, either blessed with them or cursed. I apologize if I curse your life. <laughs> oh, well, uh, Cy Williams does say I should do some voice acting if you're curious I do some limited voices I do one kind of similar to Larry the Cable Guy or Mater from Cars if you know who that is if you don't uh, google it I can put my cough drop down for a second and maybe do some voices for Larry the Cable Guy I usually go for the Mater voice which is um, one classic line I remember is, I'm happier than a tornado in a trailer park. Yep. That would be Mater. Uh, and so I like that one. And then at least some people like my dark side voice, or a.k.a. a character I named Twisted Metal. And he's, well, he'd sound odd in a dress, but I'll do him anyway just for the heck of it. Hello, Google. Ah. <laughs> I love that. And yes, that voice is hard on your throat. It's like, really, really hard. <laughs> but hey, he sounds like such a good villain. You know, like, uh, uh, Cy Williams wanted me to do some fan fiction. I could see, you know, this twisted. That, that's just such a perfect voice for, like, a villain, you know. I'll kill all the superheroes. And hell, why not the villains, too? Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> just because, eh, Twisted doesn't really like anybody. Not even himself. So, you know, why not just kill them all? In his humble opinion. Luckily, he has Marilyn, me, on the other side. Hello! It kind of balances them out a little bit and makes it so, you know, the world is not to uh, burning and you know, covered in dead corpses. Oops! So, be glad for me! Uh, and for those that don't know, and some would probably say it's a mental illness like my mother. Well, whatever. But, Twisted I view as my mental so male side up here, you know, mentally. <laughs> uh, Marilyn, obviously, my female side. The two kind of can flip back and forth. You know, at any time, Twisted is more of the depression, more of, um, you know, the hatred. Just, you know, the pain, the depression. All the bad stuff. <laughs> So, he's not a happy person. He's basically, you know, some people say, I have a dark side, or, you know, or words of that rough effect, you know, that, you know, kind of like Two-Face, if you're uh, a comic book fan. Yes, I, I'll mention comic books. Well, I personally was a fan of Two-Face from Batman the Animated Series. And, uh... Maybe if I get some money. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, I may buy a copy of Harley Quinn's Suicide Squad, the comic, because Sai has been trying to get me into comic book characters. And although certain people do not like Harley, and you know who you are. <laughs> I know, I kind of like her sense of humor on occasion, yeah, because she's just, I don't know, 
She's like uh, a bit of twisted, uh, only female. Like if Marilyn and Twisted had a baby. Poor fucking kid. Ah! Ah! Kid would be like, I'm going to kill you all. Ah! You'd be like, ah! Run for the hills! Ah! Mommy! So, me. Eh. That's just how I view my mental self. It's like half and half. And like I said, they can kind of just flip flop back and forth. Kind of like, I don't know, a married couple or something. That's how I think of them. Weird. Eh? That's me. Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. I also watched some TED Talks thanks to. What was her name? Rachel. Those are pretty good. So that was kind of nice. And I guess I'm talking way too long today. Oopsie. Yeah. Whatever. But, uh,. Made me stop and think, and you know, maybe, hopefully, try and figure out my life and put it in a rough direction so I'm not an absolute abject failure, which I tend to think of myself as. Yes, I do. Which, of course, is why Twisted exists. He's the, you know, depressed part of me that, you know, tells me I'm no good and worthless and I should kill myself. Yeah, that's a common thought, unfortunately. Anyway, Miss Marilyn, hoping you all have a good day. Eh, I guess this will be part of my documentary. It's still about me and, well, transgender slash cross-dresser slash my life in a nutshell. <laughs> so, I guess we'll add it to the documentary to pal. Uh, and uh, hope you all have a good day I'll be pumping propane as usual on Saturday hooking and hooking trailers moving trucks all that good sort of stuff so I hope you have a good weekend I'll be busy on Saturday and I'll be attempting to not slip my wrist when my mom says Jason it's Sunday and it's time for church <laughs> <laughs> I really hate church. Maybe. Sorry. So I'll probably go into church on Sunday. Uh, so keep sharp objects away from me on Sunday because I'll be tempted to use them and be like, Go on! In! And sadly, I'm not kidding. I will be tempted, people. Eh, but I won't. So, for all my haters out there, I'm sorry. I'm still alive. And I'll keep living until, I don't know, you kill me. Or I kill you. Whichever comes first. Just try it. <laughs> oh, man. Sorry, a little bit of Joker infested today. Yes, I like Joker too, so I... I like villains sometimes. Ah, they appeal to me, okay? Anyway, I believe I've bored you all enough and probably called you, caused you all mental scarring. I'm sorry. It's just me, people. That's what you get. So, uh, go see your therapist or psychologist. Maybe take some heavy uh, medication of some sort. And hope you feel better! <laughs> Although I'm probably the one that needs medication. Lots of it, please. Anyway. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. And uh, I'm having a little bit of fun, but eh, whatever. And I'll talk to you later. This is Marilyn saying goodbye for today. Hello, people. It's Marilyn. Uh, just got back from Walmart. Yeah, it's one of a few places. Anyway, I had a question about my bank account, so I wandered up to, to the bank inside Walmart because they have a location in there. It's, I don't know. It's what they do. Anyway, and uh, of course I pass the guy in my bank card, which I'm not going to show because, you know, 
has all my lovely account number on it. And uh, he's like, I'll need to see some ID. And of course, I look like this. And I'm like, I probably won't look that much like my driver's license, you know. And let's see if I can figure out how to show this without showing too much vital information. Mm. Anyway, I show him my driver's license. Yes, you can see my number. Ooh, evil. And he's like, you don't look anything like that. I guess I don't. Eh, who knew? Bad DMV photo photographers, I guess. Anyway, so that was interesting. Luckily, he still was nice and answered my question, but I definitely did not match my ID. Which, at least is a problem for some of us uh, cross-dressers or people transitioning. You don't match your ID? Yeah, I definitely don't like this, apparently. Oops. Oh, well. Speaking of Walmart, let's see. Got... Some shaving cream. Ooh. I bought a twin pack because it's actually cheaper per can, if you're wondering. Don't ask me why. My nosy economy things. And then, let's see. A Verizon uh, card to add money to my prepaid phone. And I was talking to one of my friends on Facebook. I'll just say Liz. Make my life easy. That way, if you get too embarrassed, well, you can deny it to you or something. Ugh. Necklace wrote up. Anyway, and she was talking about makeup and stuff, and so, since, this, I don't know, it's, like I said, it's kind of sort of a documentary about me and cross-dressing and stuff. Well, I thought I'd show off some of my stuff. Let's see. Most of this is nail polish, whatever color that is. Don't ask me. I'm colorblind. Eh, I think this one's purple. Kind of goldish. Uh, red. Yes, I have a thing for nail polish. I think another shade of purple? Eh, whatever. Eh, I forget. Uh, pink, I think? Mm, bluish, kind of. Although I don't think it turns out that color. Let's see what else. That doesn't really isn't anything. Oh, yeah, pink. Uh, mascara that I still gotta figure out how to put on. More nail polish from the Geolip Company. Don't ask me what color that is. I don't know. Uh, lipstick. Uh, let's see, this one at least says a color on it. Hot plum. And what's this? Lipstick. <laughs> Let's see. My shade is it? Eh, can't read it. Oh, red. Uh, more nail polish. Again, don't ask me what color. And yes, ladies, more nail polish. Don't know what color. Pink, I think. Uh. This I probably use essentially as like uh, a pre-coat or a top coat. You put it on before your nail to polish and or on top of your nail polish. Helps it last longer, stuff like that. And let's see. Oh yeah, I showed that. And so I have an assortment of stuff. Uh, this is the shade I have right on now. Black cherry. I'm not sure if I like it or not, but hey, I have it, so I wear it. No more julep nail polish. Mm, I Did I show this already? I don't know what color that is. It's not labeled. You makeup people sometimes don't label stuff. Uh, some eyeshadow from Claire's. I guess I'll try it. Some people will say it's crap. I don't know. I'll give it a shot, huh? And let's see what else. Uh, got to put my nail polish away here. So yes, that's my assorted nail polish. Woo. 
Let's see, is that it over here? And this is a makeup kit I got a while ago from a company called Elf. If you're wondering, it looks kind of beat up because I accidentally dropped it and it bunged it up some. See, it's kind of broke. Ooh, pretty. And then this opens up too this way. I usually use it for eyeshadow. I guess you can use it for other things. I don't know. I'm still learning about makeup people. And then, let's see. Ew! Excuse me. Eh. It's my Bare Minerals kit that we've probably seen. It has like foundation and brushes and concealer and some primer that I need some more of and various stuff that comes with the kit. It's kind of nice. Very expensive leather box, like 80 some odd dollars, I think. Yeah, plus tax. If you're wondering, this is one of my dresses. I think I've worn it before. I don't remember, honestly. I like it. It was a little brisk out in this dress. I think it's more of a spring kind of dress. And yes, the, my legs are still bunged up from work, so sorry. And I don't know, I may need to redo my toenails. I've kind of just left them be, but I didn't feel like putting on pantyhose. And granted, most of my pantyhose are run and stuff. Oh, what else? Oh, yeah, my wig. Most people know about, I think. Explains one of the reasons I look so different in my ID. Uh, what else? Oh, yeah. Some of the stuff I've shown before, I just don't think I've ever shown it all. My lovely purse, because dresses don't have pockets. And hairbrush, woo! Excitement. And I keep my cell phone in my purse, just because it's easy to pack that way. I also usually keep my wallet in there. Uh, I just usually use my mail, mail wallet. And you just pack that around with you. Of course, as most ladies know. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, I gotta wash my wig too. Uh, fun. Anyway, so that was about my highlight of my day was going to Walmart. Being told I don't look anything like my ID. I took it as a compliment. Yes, I look a little different, that's why. I just teased the banker. I'm like, I'm under here somewhere. You know, under the wig and the bra and the dress and the panties and the heels. Uh, somewhere under there is the male me. <laughs> so, whatever. I don't know. Uh, makes you wonder how many people, I don't know, have issues with ID not matching up like I was pointing out. I don't look anything like mine when I'm all dressed up. <sighs> I do have some other things like necklaces and earrings and stuff that I didn't bring out, but eh, essentially just, you know, stuff to look girly. Yep, yep, yep. How do you think of that like shade? I don't know. I call it the Joker shade. It kind of reminds me of Joker. I don't know why. Beer. But oh well. Hopefully it doesn't look too horrible. No idea. Mm. Oh yeah, also Liz was saying I look beautiful dressed up. I'm like, really? I do? Saying I did my makeup good. Or well, I guess would be correct English. Sorry, grammar people. Today all I have on is lipstick. That's it, people. Nothing fancy today. Uh, I don't know what else. Um, I get ambitious and work some more on my documentary. Worked a little bit on it today, but honestly, I just haven't been feeling the best. I'm not sure what's up. But whatever. Um, been applying for jobs. That's real fun. Not. No, it's not. It's not. Uh, of course, I don't want to apply like this. Eh, get hard. <laughs> we need a good cross-dressing person like you. 
Eh, I don't think that's going to happen, especially in Utah. Pretty street laced. Uh, let's see what else. I don't know. Apparently, the dog's destroying stuff. Crazy dog. If you're curious, my mom does have a dog. He's usually asleep, but he's doing something. Destroying the house. I don't know. <sighs> what else? I don't know. But, just thought I'd say howdy. Oh, I guess dressing up. That's probably some women know I have some extra things. Like, I'm always trying to figure out where my wallet is because I'm not used to packing a purse, ladies. I've had to learn to make sure to bring my hairbrush because the wind messes up your hair, although you'd never know because this headset messes up your hair, too. Uh, hmm. And you definitely have things in your bathroom that most men don't have, like nail polish, lipstick, mascara, which I still got learned to put on correctly. And of course your closet's kind of strange. It's like I have dresses and skirts and pants and a suit and hey baby, my poor closet. <laughs> and of course I have uh, what I call my drag bag. It's basically just cross-dressing accessories like necklaces, heels, tights, pantyhose, bra extenders, bras. Eh, this goes on, I'm sure. Essentially, I have a little bit from both closets. <laughs> some male items and some female items, so. You know, makes life interesting. Uh, well, oh, yeah, I did write my fashion article today. I'll be trying to write that more consistently. Sorry for those that follow it. I've, like I say, I haven't been feeling the best, and my depression's been. <laughs> skyrocketing off the face of the planet so we're going off the face of the planet however you want to determine it hasn't been good however you want to determine it so that hasn't been helping anything my health's been kind of <laughs> I'm not sure why that is uh, but oh well and let's see anything else today I don't know as usual, cross-dressing questions within reason are welcome. Um, just try and be polite, as usual. Um, sorry I didn't do a cross-dressing video on Saturday. I was just like, <sighs> I was beat. Because last Saturday was the end of the month, and oh man, that was just nuttier than hoot out. Boo-hoo! Crazy! And let's see what else. Uh, still filling lots of propane, moving lots of trailers, getting my annual workout, you know. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah, ladies, I'm single. Uh, I, I work at U-Haul, and uh, I like to dress in a in a dress on in my free time. I could imagine making a personal ad. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'm very manly and I shave my legs and I shave my armpits and part of my chest and uh, <laughs> uh, or uh, I know I was joking around a little but the twisted metal video metal dating you know or he, he try and get a date that would really be bizarre be like hello ladies do you like fires? I like to sit by the fire of a burning city. So romantic. While people scream in agony. Ah. <laughs> uh, and all the women are like, Ah! ah run in there! Run in there! <laughs> uh, I don't think it, it'd do well on a dating service. I like bashing skulls, killing people, burning stuff. You know, usual guy. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, what uh, twisted?
suggested mental hobbies be depression. Check. Writing. Yeah. 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 Uh, death. Destruction. Oh, that reminds me. Speaking of death and destruction, somebody said I was destroying the fabric of society by wearing dresses. Really? Huh? Or the framework of society. Excuse me. I'm sorry, but if society is that weak, <laughs> it's pretty freaking pathetic if you can't put up with me wearing a dress, people. And that's just my opinion. Uh, so that was interesting. So, if you're curious, I apparently am destroying the fo social framework of the world. I'm really powerful, man. I need is like a cat, you know. Oh, my precious. Yes, yes, Mr. Bond. I want one billion dollars in good bullion. <laughs> See, I, I mean, I got the evil laugh. I mean, <laughs> hey, I have an evil voice. I have twisted. I want that money now. In my account. Or I'll kill you all. I mean, gee, I guess I could. Global domination, here we go! <laughs> oh, sorry, I just find that laughable. It's like, really? I'm destroying society's framework. Wow. Anyway, leaving on a note of social anarchy, apparently. <laughs> Isn't that pretty, boys and girls? Well, uh, I wish you a good weekend. I, like I say, will be pumping propane on Saturday, moving trucks, trailers, usual stuff, and destroying the framework of society! <laughs> Yes, people! Don't forget that! Mark it on your calendar. Anarchy! <laughs> <laughs> really? Oh, well. But, uh, so, my social calendar will be quite busy with destroying the universe. Girls gotta have something to do, you know. Uh... Followed by the usual, you know, twisted metal special of death, destruction, burning. You know. Seriously, people? Seriously. <laughs> I don't write a story about that, but you now I, I don't have plans for anarchy. Yeah, maybe a few. Shh. Quiet. We're hunting wabbits. Wasky Wabbits. Anyway, I think I've been goofing long enough today. I'll talk to y'all later. Uh, this is Marilyn saying bye for today. Hi, folks. It's Marilyn. And I just got done a few minutes ago going to Walmart and taking a picture, oops, of myself next to the urinal. And if you're wondering, I had to squat because I'm so freaking tall with my heels. That I couldn't get me and the urinal in the picture, but yes, that is the urinal on the back of the picture. Hi, me. Hello. And yes, this is that dress. And just to prove it's a dress. Oh, uh, ee, uh, uh, uh. And yes, I didn't do my nail polish too great. Yeah, my my legs are still beat up from work, etc., etc. Uh, and hopefully I got semi decent view of it. And yes, this is what I wore in the men's bathroom at Walmart, taking a photo of myself next to a urinal. Who? Huh. <laughs> so that was an experience. Uh, yesterday I had a rough day at work at uh, Uber. Yeah, I know. I may not do it anymore. I was late and it was just a fiasco. I'll put it that way. Sorry, lady. Didn't mean to be late. I was really trying. It just, uh, you know. If you're wondering, I didn't wear this because uh, essentially you have to match your ID. And of course, my ID is my driver's license, and my driver's license is male. 
So, therefore, guess what? You get to drive as male in my particular case. And if you're wondering why I took a picture of myself next to you, you know, it's kind of a, a trend, shall we say, in uh, the transgender community. Uh, basically, a lot of states are saying that, you know, if you're born male, you have to always use the men's room, even if you've undergone a sex change and you're now a woman or vice versa. So you can potentially, you know, be like me and end up rocking a dress at a urinal. Well, at least if you're a guy. As I guess if you've fully transitioned into a woman, then you'd be rocking one of the stalls in the men's restroom. Have fun with that. They're usually disgusting. And I do mean disgusting. Bang! I want to describe it. It'll cause you nightmares. Anyway. So, I decided to add my humble little self as Miss Piggy would say to uh, the collection of transgender or in my case cross-dressers since some people still will argue until the end of time whether or not I'm transgender to the list of people that have taken their photos next to wherever they're supposedly supposed to be obviously in this outfit I look a wee bit out of place in the men's room. Just a little. Just a snudge. Don't know why. I mean, you know, I only got heels on and a dress and, you know, bra. You know, panties, if you really have to know. You know, eh, nothing big. Just hanging out in the men's room. With my heart going, <laughs> and me trying to get a photo going, and rotten fucking shifts up from the So if I don't look very happy in my photo, it's because it's like, I just want to get the photo and get the freak out of here. Thank you very much. I didn't really have to pee. It was just part of the protest or the movement or whatever you want to call it. Oh, well, saying movement in a bathroom may not be the right word, right? Eh, whatever. Protest. There we go. Oopsie. <laughs> Sorry. Child humor. Uh, well, um... And so, I'll have to debate whether I want to drive with Uber again. Because A, I have to drive in mail, and she's like, I get to do enough stuff in mail. Trust me. In my mail clothes, I should say. Or people won't recognize, you know, because you have to, like I say, you have to match your photo ID. And at least some people cannot recognize me like this, like my banker, or the person at the bank. Last week, they're like, you should have the same person. It's like, yes, I'm the same effing person. I just have a wig on, some lipstick, a dress, and heels, and a bra. And I usually wear panties. But not like you can see my panties anyway. Unless you're looking at my dress. In which case, stop it. <laughs> anyway, what else? Um, so, I'll debate the Uber thing. I don't know if transgender people want me protesting along with their protest, but they, I'll throw my picture in and let the chips fall where they may, as they say. Oh, oh. oh yeah. On kind of a bizarre note, uh, there was two boxes in the back of uh, one of our u all trucks, and of course, you know, I just assumed they were empty or and full of junk. As the usual, too. Either they're completely empty or they just have a whole lot of, well, junk in the box, right? So I go lift one of them because, well, you have to clean out the truck. Well, obviously, you have to get the boxes out for to clean out the truck. So it kind of makes sense. Anyway, I go lift one of the boxes and it's like, this thing is not empty. So I pack it to the end of the truck and sit it at the end of the truck. And I grab the other box and pack it to the end of the truck and sit it on the other box. And then I sit them both on the ground when I'm done. And then I grab what we call a utility doll. It's basically to move around boxes and stuff. You know, it has a handle and wheels. And, you know, kind of handy. And uh, so I put them on that and I roll it around because there's no way I'm packing that, those two heavy boxes any further than I have, have to. Why? I do enough hard work. 
not gonna make my life harder, as my dad would say. Work smarter, not harder. So, you know, use your head, other than a hat rack. Or maybe a wake rack in my case. <laughs> and so, you know, I pack him inside. I tell my boss, whose name is Doug, I'm like, hey, Doug, uh, these two boxes got left in a bot in the truck, you know, and there's something in them. And he's like, well, what's in them? And I'm like, that's a good question. So, you know, I cut open one of them, because, well, else you're going to know what's in it, you know, you cut open the tape and everything. Oh, it's a bunch of kitchen stuff, you know, like food, you know, miscellaneous, you know, like you'd have in your cupboard. You know, nothing special. He's like, oh, okay, you know. So later on, he calls the customer, you know, hey, this is Doug at you all. We have your stuff, you know, you accidentally left it in the back of your truck. Because people leave stuff in the back of the truck. Big shot. You know, if you want it, come go, come and get it, you know, and I'll keep it for you for a couple days. The only reason he says a couple days as if you've never been to our U-Haul location, it's very small. And we don't have a lot of storage space. We just don't, okay? And so it's just kind of a necessity to, well, we can't keep it forever, right? We don't have the room. We just don't. And so, you know, I kind of forgot about it because I figured, you know, I'll come get it. You know, if I had forgot two boxes of stuff, I'd come get it when I could, you know, as soon as I could, obviously, depending on the schedule and all that, you know. So, you yeah, know, whatever. So, that was Saturday. The rest of Saturday passes, you know. They don't come in. It's like, eh, whatever. Sunday, I'm off work. Monday, the boxes are still there, and I'm like, hmm, huh, that's kind of weird. And uh, it was kind of slow, because Mondays are usually. And Duggar and I are taking relaxing break you know underneath the awning of the building you know just you know kind of chilling out two two dudes you know just chilling out and Doug I don't think knows I cross dressed but yeah if he finds out whatever anyway so we're just sitting there chilling out you know kind of our little porch so to speak and uh, Doug is like what do you think we should do with those boxes? And I think he was just like hitting like, please take them. Please. I said, well, if it's okay with you, because of course he's the boss, not me. You know, and no one picks them up, you know. I'll go through them. I'll keep whatever I can, you know. I'll donate whatever I don't want. And if it, there's anything left over, I'll probably have to throw it away because I was figuring it'll probably be a lot of junk, you know. No biggie, so... He's like, okay, if no one comes in for by, by tomorrow, which was uh, Tuesday, of course, you know, just take it. And I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. or take them, you know, since there's two boxes. And uh, so I'm like, okay, you know, whatever. And so Tuesday rolls around, the boxes are still there. I decide to leave them there for the majority of the, the shift, you know, try and give the person the most amount of time I can. And near the end of the shift, you know, I pull up my car to the front of the our location and again grab a utility dolly, put the boxes on the dolly and wheel them out to my car and then, you know, load them into the car. Because again, I'm not going to pack them any further than I have to and then of course pack the utility dolly back inside and leave it inside because I'm not going to pay the rent to the thing. Because I just had to move them through the garage of my mom's house. So anyway, I get home, you know, and I pack in two boxes of stuff, and they're big boxes, you know. They're like, I don't know, maybe about three feet long, two feet high, maybe about two feet wide. You know, pretty big boxes, pretty heavy, and you know. I bring them down inside and set them down because, you know, I figure I'm going to go through them. Now my mama, of course, clean freak of the universe, doesn't want to wait. And of course, I'm trying to eat because I'm hungry. Big shock after working all day. Anyway, so, you know, of course they're already open because I opened both of them eventually to find out what was another one. More kitchen stuff. And she just part, starts pulling out bag after bag of, like, uh, drink mix and instant potatoes and or boxes like of spaghetti and uh, cocoa mix and you know just 
box or bag after box after bag and you're you're kind of at least I'm you know eating and I'm watching her you know and it's kind of like one of those magicians where they keep pulling the the, the handkerchiefs you know and you're like how many handkerchiefs are hooked together <laughs> you know kind of thing you, know? <laughs> you just keep watching her pull stuff and then of course eventually she gets done with that box and almost everything is good there's only I don't know probably less than two items let's say in the first box that are bad or that we don't want yeah and so she starts on box number two you know again more you know instant potatoes more you know drink mix more cocoa mix more uh, spaghetti various other things you know but you know all food related items keeps pulling on out pulling on you're just sitting there going what in the blue blazes is going on and she just keeps pulling stuff out she keeps putting it away you know putting it away and finally she gets done with box number two by the time she got done with box number two there was maybe five items or so that we didn't want or you know were like eh, probably just not worth it you know because with food you can potentially have you know insects or you know it can go bad or if you're not sure let's just put it this way it's better to throw it out right people so that's the the essentially the precept we worked under but you know still it was only like five things or so that were you know not worth keeping essentially other than a box of iced tea that we have no idea what to do with we don't drink iced tea so I'll have to try and figure out somewhere to pawn that off on or potentially throw it away if I can't and you know my mom are sitting there and thinking talking you know back and forth and uh, of course mom's usually the ones buying groceries and I bought you know a few groceries for like my kids in the past and stuff you know and so you know I have a rough idea of food values it's been a few years granted but you know rough and of course my mom buys food all the time so she really knows food values and we're like you know it was probably approximately if you had to buy everything that we saved out of those two boxes about two hundred dollars worth of food or food related items yeah and they just left it it's like what the Bleak! and uh, so anyway, anyway we all not need drink mix we only not need spaghetti and we will not need instant potatoes for the foreseeable near future at all yeah so that was bizarre oh and cereal you know there's other things but those are the main things I remember pulling out and soup and you know just you know stuff you'd literally find in somebody's kitchen you know if you open somebody's cupboard and we're looking for food related items it'd probably be there most likely in most people's house well depending on what they ate but you get the point so that was bizarre so my mom thanks to me and Doug and some customer that apparently was I don't know a little out there my mom got like I say roughly 200 maybe a little more dollars worth of food so that was a bonus because my mom's not rich and let's face it neither am I and you know two hundred dollars worth of food as well you know two hundred dollars worth of food so anyways I guess I've bored you all long enough uh, hope you all have a good weekend I'll be pumping propane again <laughs> debating whether to continue being an uber driver <sighs> I don't know and uh feeling bad about being late for the one person well I was a little late for another person but that's another story and that wasn't nearly as bad as the other one it was just a fairly bad first day we'll just leave it at that anyway it's Marilyn saying hoping you have a good weekend talk to you later and goodbye for today